And joining me now is Matt Gorman. He served as senior communications advisor to the Scott campaign. And Matt, uh, first of all, you're here in D.C. and you were not with the candidate, I'm guessing. When did you find out about what was going down and what can you tell us about how this decision came together? As I understand it, I think he took the weekend. He had, he had the flu late last mm, week. He canceled right. some Iowa events. And he took the weekend <clears throat> and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, he was, um, I think he kind of took stock. He was able to see that the path that, you know, he hoped was there wasn't there as much anymore. And I mean, Garrett, you, you and I have done these quite a bit. It's a slog. Yeah. And you need to really wake up every day believing that you have the, you know, a clear path to presidency. And I think that path he realized had, had narrowed. Um, and so I think that is the realization, and that's how he came to his decision. Which, look, it's a very personal one, too. Absolutely. How much do you think changed between Wednesday night and today? I mean, he was so confident coming out of that debate. I think a, a lot of observers didn't feel like he fundamentally changed the direction things were going on Wednesday night. Did that play into it? I mean, walk me through some of that. I, look, I think what you saw on Wednesday was a very authentic Tim Scott. I think, you know, from what I had heard, he felt his most at ease, him, as if any debate he had so far was that uh, debate on Wednesday night with, with you all. Well, you and I talked about the idea yeah. of before the debate, that this is never somebody who's going to come out and like throw haymakers. It would have yes. been fundamentally un Tim Scott of him yep. to just change who he was in, in, in the last, what ultimately ended up being his last debate. I think, I think what he entered this campaign with, and I think he's leaving it, he wanted to make sure that his reputation, his good reputation, his good name was still intact. And I think what he had seen from other folks who where that wasn't the case, where they, they turned into something they weren't. Mm -hmm. They weren't authentic to themselves. And I think no matter what, win or lose, he had said this repeatedly, he was going to stay who he was. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we saw Wednesday. Nominee mentioned this a little bit. In poll after poll, he would always come out with these super high favorables. Voters everywhere loved him, yeah. but not enough to vote for him. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that? I mean, I think they were able to get to know him. They liked him. You know, if you and I saw him in, in small town halls, this is a guy from Charleston, South, North Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. He'd go to rural Iowa and connect with people. Mm -hmm. I also think that, the candidly, the, the electorate wasn't necessarily too enthused for an optimistic, positive message at this time. Doesn't mean it's forever, as you kind of heard him on Fox, mm -hmm. but at least right now, it doesn't seem to be the case. Do you think him dropping out says more about Tim Scott or more about Donald Trump? I think it says about Tim Scott, and, and I mean that in a good way. I, I think he realized that this wasn't going to happen. He wasn't going to belabor it, um, and he believes that, look, at least over half of the GOP, around half, want an alternative to Donald, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. We believe we were the best position to be that alternative. Now, if somebody else is going to come and be the alternative, they have that opportunity to without it, it crowding. Do you think, does he think there is still room for an alternative? Or is part of this decision to get out a realization that nobody's going to knock off this guy this cycle? I haven't talked to him about this, but what I think is this race is pretty fluid still. Mm -hmm. I mean, as he's kind of said in that clip, right? We were talking about Herman Cain at one point. Where, you know, Rick Santorum was not on the radar when, at this point in 2012. So I think things can be fluid, not just in Iowa, but as we kind of continue down the calendar. Um, Tim Scott said on the trail often that he didn't think Donald Trump could win. Um, does he do anything to affect Donald Trump winning or losing now as not a candidate? And by that I mean, do you think he endorses? Do you think he campaigns against the former president in some capacity? Or is he going to the sidelines for this race? I think he's going to take some time first of all. I, I take him at his word that he's not going to endorse right away. And look, again, I think we cannot overstate how arduous and how personal these things become, right? And so I think it's not unexpected for, you know, within either A, when you sit down and have this interview, or within 24 hours to have mm -hmm. it all figured out. I take him at his word, though. He doesn't plan on endorsing, at least right now. And I, I think he's still in the Senate for a couple of years. He might be the chairman of the bank committee. We haven't heard the last of Tim Scott, but I think we give him some time to have him figured out. I think that sounds right. Uh, Matt Gorman, thank you for coming on. Thank you thank for your work. I'm sure we'll have you back Absolutely. soon. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.